Hello, my name is Adi Joshi, and I will be presenting some results from the paper on discrete Halley type theorems that Frederick Sorob and I authored. For this presentation, we will mainly be concerned with points and regions in the plane. Halley's theorem in the plane basically states that for every finite collection of convex sets, if every three sets intersect at a point, then all sets must intersect at a point in the plane. It is natural to ask if a discrete version of Halley's theorem is true in the plane. Instead of requiring that every three convex sets intersect at some point in the plane, suppose that we require that they intersect at some point in a discrete set of points P. Then can we conclude that all the convex sets intersect at some point in P? Unfortunately, this is not true even if we require that every k of the convex sets intersect at a point in P for some large constant k. To see this, consider a set P of n points in convex position. Let our collection of convex sets consist of the convex hulls of every subset of P of size greater than n minus n over k. Then, the total size, in terms of the number of points of P contained, of any subset of k convex sets is more than k minus 1 into n, and therefore they must have a common point in P. On the other hand, no subset of P of size less than n over k can hit all the convex sets. While such statements are not true for arbitrary convex sets, we can show that they are true for some simple regions in the plane. We will use a technique similar to that used by Allen and Kleitman in their proof of the hadwiger Brenner PQ theorem. The basic idea is as follows. Suppose that we are given a set of points P and a set of regions S such that for each subset of k points in our point set, there exists a region in our set of regions containing all points in that subset. Then, for the families of regions we consider, it can be shown that there exists a region in our set of regions that contains a constant fraction of the points in our point set. Then, using LP duality, we can assign weights to the regions such that the total weight of the regions containing any particular point is at least epsilon into w where epsilon is a constant and w is the total weight of all the regions. Finally, using strong epsilon nets, whose size depends only on epsilon, we can obtain a set of points of constant size that hit all the regions. A similar approach works in the dual setting too. There are two main types of problems that we will be covering. Given a set of points, a family of regions on the plane, and some fixed positive integer k, the first type of problem is if for every subset of k points there exists a region in our set of regions that covers all of the k points, then what is the size of the smallest subset of the regions whose union completely covers all of our points? The second type of problem is if every k of the regions intersect at a common point in our set of points, what is the smallest subset of points from our point set that together hit all of the regions in our set of regions? In this section, we will cover some theorems related to house spaces and pseudo disks in the plane. Theorem 1 basically states that if every three points in our set are covered by some half space, then there are two half spaces that cover all the points in our set. Proof. We take the convex hull of the set of points. Let H1 be the half space that covers the greatest number of points on the convex hull. If H1 does not intersect the convex hull, it must cover all points, or n minus 1 points. The remaining point must be covered by some other half space, which means that two half spaces cover all points, and the proof for this case is complete. Otherwise, if h1 intersects the convex hull, it must intersect at two edges. Let p and q be two points such that they are contained in h1, and they are the endpoints of the two edges that h1 intersects with. The line through P and Q splits the convex hull into two regions, region A and region B, one of which is covered by H1. We will assume that the covered region is region A. Let R be a point on the convex hull that is not covered by H1. The points P, Q, and R must be covered by some half space, according to our original definition, and we call this half space H2. Since H2 contains P and Q, it must contain the line segment that joins them, and therefore it must cover either region A or region B. If it covers region A, it will cover more points on the convex hull than H1, which is a contradiction. 
This means that H2 must cover the region, and therefore H1 and H2 cover all points in P. I will now be proving that the tree in this theorem is tight. So basically, if every subset of two points in our point set belongs to some half space, then there may not exist two half spaces that cover all points in P. So to start the proof, we will be constructing our set of points. So to do this, we take a disk D and three arcs, each with a very large radius of curvature. So any tangent to an arc will pass through the disk D, but not intersect any other arc. To make this proof a bit easier to follow, I will be talking about clockwise and counterclockwise arcs. This should be clear from the context, but just as an example, L1 is clockwise to L0, while L2 is counterclockwise to L0. To construct our point set with n points, we will distribute n over 3 points uniformly along each arc. To construct the set of half spaces, we do the following. For each point P in our set of points, we add a half space to our set such that the half space contains all points on the arc in which P is located, but it does not contain P itself. Each half space can be thought of as a tangent to the arc at the point P, but shifted very slightly so it does not include P. Each half plane therefore contains all points, except one, from the arc that it is tangent to. It also contains all points from the arc in a clockwise direction, and no points from the arc in the counterclockwise direction. So every two points are contained in a half space. If the points lie on the same arc, a half plane that is tangent to a point in the counterclockwise arc contains both points. If the points are in separate arcs, one point, we'll call it R, lies on an arc counterclockwise to the other. Any half plane tangent to this counterclockwise arc, except for the one tangent to the arc at the point R, will contain both points. Now we prove that the two half planes do not cover all points. Assume the two half planes are tangent to the same arc then both half planes will not cover any points from the arc that is counterclockwise to the one they are tangent to. If the two half planes are tangent to different arcs, then from the two arcs there is one that is counterclockwise to the other. The point that defines the tangent half plane to this counterclockwise arc is not contained in either half plane. A set of simply connected regions in the plane form a family of pseudodisks if the boundaries of any pair of regions either do not intersect or intersect at exactly two points. Theorem 6 states that if a set of convex pseudodisks and a set of points have the constraint that every three pseudodisks intersect at a point in the set, then two points in the set hit all pseudodisks in our set of pseudodisks. Before we start the proof, we introduce a helpful definition. For any pseudodisk, we define its core as the convex hull of the points of P contained within it. We also define C as the set of all cores of our pseudodisks. Rather than proving Theorem 6 directly, we will prove some simpler lemmas from which Theorem 6 follows. Lemma 2 states that the intersection of all cores in C is non-empty. Proof. Since every triple of pseudodisks in our set intersect at some point in our set of points, and such a point is contained in the cores of all three of the pseudodisks, all triples of cores in C have a non-empty intersection. By Halley's theorem, this means that all cores must intersect at a point in the plane, but this point may not necessarily be in our set of points P. Lemma 3 states that there exists a straight-edge plane triangulation, denoted T, and on our point set, such that the points and edges inside any pseudodisk in our set of pseudodisks form a connected subgraph of T. The proof for this will not be covered, but it does follow from Lemma 5 from the paper New Existent Proofs Epsilon Nets, by Perga and Ray. Lemma 4. If the core of some pseudodisk intersects an edge of the triangulation, then the pseudodisk must contain at least one of the endpoints of the edge. Proof. The points and edges inside any core also form a connected subgraph of the triangulation. If the core intersects an edge, but does not contain either endpoint of the edge, then we obtain a contradiction since the edges inside the core cannot form a connected subgraph of the triangulation as shown in the image. Lemma 5. There exist two points in our point set that hit all pseudodisks in our set of pseudodisks. Proof. By Lemma 2, we know that the intersection of all cores is non-empty. Let x be a point in this intersection. The point x must be contained in some triangle in our triangulation. 
Since every core contains x, every core must intersect one of the edges of our selected triangle. By lemma 4, this means every core must contain at least one of the endpoints of the triangle, which means the three corners of the triangle hit all pseudodisks. We will now show that one of the points is redundant. Assume all three corners are necessary to hit all pseudodisks. Then this means that for each corner, there is at least one pseudodisk that is hit only by that corner. Take three pseudodisks such that each is only hit by one of the corners, and each is hit by a different corner. These three pseudodisks must, by definition, intersect at some point in our point set, and this point must lie outside of the triangle. Since the pseudodisks are convex, and their intersection is convex, the line segment joining this point to x is also contained in every pseudodisk. The line segment must intersect some edge of the triangle, meaning each of these three pseudodisks intersect the same edge in the triangle, and by lemma 4. This means that the two endpoints of the edge hit all three pseudodisks, a contradiction. This concludes the proof for Theorem 6. Theorem 7 states that if every pair of points is covered by a half space in our set of half spaces H, then three half spaces cover all points. Proof. Take the set of half spaces consisting of the complement to each half space in H. Assume for contradiction that no three half spaces in H cover all points in our set of points. This means that every triple of half spaces in our set of complementary half spaces must intersect at a point in our point set. Since a half space can be thought of as a disk with a very large radius of curvature, we can apply theorem 6 to our set of complementary half spaces and our point set to conclude that two points, PQ, in our point set hit all the complementary half spaces. This implies that each half space in H avoids at least one of the points P or Q. However, this is a contradiction as every pair of points must be contained in a half space. We will now cover some theorems related to axis parallel rectangles in the plane. Theorem 9 states that if every pair of points is contained in an axis parallel rectangle, then there are five rectangles that cover all points. Proof. Let R1 be the rectangle that covers the leftmost and rightmost points. Any point that is not contained in R1 will either be above or below R1. If above, the rectangles that cover the leftmost and topmost point and the rightmost and topmost points will together cover the point. Similarly, if the point is below, the rectangles that cover the leftmost and bottommost points and the rightmost and bottommost points will together cover the point. This is the proof that the number 5 is tight. That is, if every pair of points is contained in an axis parallel rectangle, then four rectangles may not cover all points. The points P1, P2, P3, P4 are, respectively, the top, left, bottom, and rightmost points in our point set. The line segments each extend a short distance from their respective points to the counterclockwise point. No horizontal or vertical line should intersect more than one line segment. The point PC is in the center. Our points are evenly distributed along each line segment. It is simple now to see that no four rectangles could cover all points. To cover all the points in a line segment, a rectangle must contain an endpoint of that segment and a point from the counterclockwise segment. For example, to fully contain S1, a rectangle must contain P1 and some point from S2 which we can assume is P2. Since we must have four such rectangles, and none of the rectangles cover the point PC, we cannot cover all points with four rectangles. If you found our presentation interesting, you can find more details in our paper. We have also listed a few open problems there that look quite simple, but we were unable to solve. Thank you for listening.